Hello everyone, I'm Kylie and thank you for joining me today for another Scrap With Us where I'm collaborating with my good friend Lauren who is Craft Some Joy. She will have a video happening right now over on her YouTube channel as well. But today we thought it would be fun to create a layout featuring the brand new Seasonal Sightings collection from Creative Memories. If you haven't had a chance to check it out yet it's a fabulous Christmas themed collection and we're going to be sharing some tips and tricks for you all to create a layout for the festive season. Now as always I will have a PDF available on my website after today's video which features all of the measurements and step-by-step -step instructions for you to be able to recreate this layout for yourselves as well. So I will link everything below this video you need. Be sure to pop on over after you've watched my layout come together and see Lauren's and she will have her PDF listed on her website as well. Now I am here live with you today so do hit up the chat box and say hi. Feel free to ask any questions but I can't wait for you to see the layout that I've created for you all. Now this is a two page design that I'm creating today however I'm just going to film uh, creating the left hand side of the layout because the methods that I use are exactly the same for both pages. So I'm going to start you're going to need the circle punch the new circle punch from Creative Memories and I've also got the 12 inch decorative trimmer. Now I do use the new envelope and bow maker to create some bows for this layout. Now to create the background, I've got some papers here on my desk. I've selected two designer papers. Now this beautiful check pattern was from the Totally Tonal Christmas Designer Paper Pack. And this lime green paper is from the Shades of um, Seasonal Sightings Paper Pack. These were both uh, promotional paper packs that I took advantage on and I, I just really love this check pattern. As you can see though, it's a very busy paper. So it's it's got a lot going on. There's a lot of color and I'm just going to share some techniques on how you can break up that pattern um, and still add lots of different layers uh, over the top of it without it looking too busy. So that's why I have a sheet of white cardstock here as well. It's going to be our little buffer to break up the colors and the patterns. And then I've also got a red sheet of cardstock here and that's going to be to map my photo. So I can set this one aside for now. And you'll need obviously two of each design for the double page spread, but I've just got one of each here because we're just going to be creating the one page. But I'm going to have this beautiful check pattern that I love as the frame of my layout. So I can set that aside. And then these two, the white cardstock and the lime green, that's going to be uh, the center focal point of my layout. So what we need to do to begin with is take our white cardstock and we need to trim it down a little bit. So I'm just going to bring in the 12 inch trimmer with my straight blade. And it needs to be trimmed down to 11 inches by 11 inches. So I'll just trim that away. Okay. So next with our lime green paper, this needs to be trimmed down to 10 and a half inches by 10 and a half. So I'm just going to take an inch and a half off one side and an inch and a half off the top. And we'll be left with a 10.5 by 10.5 square. You can keep these strips, they'd be great for border strips for another project. All right, I'll start with the white cardstock. And what you need to do is I'm just going to align that onto my cutting mat, making sure it's center. And it's really easy to do that on the cutting mat because you can see you've got these diagonal lines that run from corner to corner. So all I need to do is just align uh, the corner of my paper to each of these lines. And I know that I'm going to have that cardstock centered on my cutting mat. And just with a pencil, I'm just going to put a small little marking 
on the six inch mark on all four sides. So that'll be halfway um, on each side. Okay, so I'm going to bring in my 12 inch decorative trimmer. We're going to be working with the less wavy side of it. And all of these inch markings that are featured um, down the side of the trimmer here, I want you to disregard all of those measurements. That's not what we're going to be working with to align our paper. But instead, you can see if I lift up uh, this bracket here, you can see you have this marking right in the center of this bracket. This is the marking that I want you to align the pencil mark on your paper with. And also, if I just show you on the trimmer board where that is, you can see you have three ridge lines before you get to the side of the trimmer board. The edge of your paper will be in the third ridge from the outside edge. So I'll insert my paper so you can see. I know it may seem a little confusing. So I'm going to align my paper in that third ridge from the side and my pencil marking is aligned here to the center little nodule on the arm bracket. Because you've got to remember that we've trimmed our paper down. It's not 12 inches long. So that's why I'm going off the center with this marking. And you can see we've got one, two, three little ridge lines that I've aligned the side of my paper. And once you have that in place, we're just going to trim that small edge off. So you're only taking the smallest amount off. Now we need to work opposites for this technique. So I'm going to rotate my paper to the opposite side and insert it the exact same way, aligning my pencil marking with that center nodule of the bracket. It's three ridges in from the side of my trimmer board. And I'm going to trim that small edge off. So we've done both opposite sides. So now we need to rotate and do the other two sides. Again, working on our opposites. So just insert the cardstock the exact same way and trim that off. And the reason why I'm working on opposites is to ensure that I just get a lovely even frame. We'll align that final edge, line it up nicely, make sure it's nice and straight, and trim that off. And what we're going to be left with, you can see, it just creates a really lovely, interesting frame for our layout. So now I need to do the exact same technique with our green paper. And I'm going to make sure that I line up each corner touching the diagonals on my cutting mat. And when all corners are touching those diagonal lines, I know it's centered on my cutting mat. And I can bring in my pencil and just lightly mark on the six inch marking of the cutting mat to get it halfway on each side. And it's the exact same technique as we used for the white cardstock. Forget about the measurements and just align it to that center nodule here and have it nice and straight through that ridgeway and trim off that small edge. It just takes the smallest amount off. We can flip it and do the opposite. The biggest thing is making sure you've got it nice and straight through this ridge line because we haven't got the top or the base of the trimmer to sit that paper into. And we've done our opposites on one side so we can do the remaining two sides. Our final turn. And that completes our second framed piece. So I can set my decorative trimmer aside for now. 
Now I'll bring back in that white frame that we cut down and the green is going to be layered directly over the top before that goes over my check paper. Now, if you would like to conserve cardstock and conserve paper, by all means, gut these frames and you can gut um, the check paper, the base page of the layout as well. But ultimately, and I'll just bring in my check paper, the reason why I've added the white is because the pattern work and the colors of that base page is quite busy. And the white paper, what it's going to do, the white cardstock, is it just breaks up that layer and separates the top page from the bottom. If I was to take away that white, you can just see how much busier that becomes. So the reason why I like to add that white layer is just to break up the colour and really draw attention to the focal points of your layout. Now, before I adhere these two layers together, I also just want to highlight the edges a little bit. Again, just to help them stand out from that busy background paper. So I've just brought in my little ink tool and some black ink. And I'm certainly not going to be heavy handed, but I'm just going to go around and just highlight the edges of my cardstock as well as that top layer for my background page and it's just going to add that little bit of definition so that when the layers come together they will stand out from that busy background okay so with all of those edges now inked up I can adhere them both together and when I've got that green layer centered and I'm just eyeballing it really when I have that centered I will come in with my tape and adhere that into place Okay, so now with all three layers in place, you can just see how that inking has just defined um, the outside of those borders, just that little bit. Okay, so now I'm going to create the little lollipop that features on the layout. I created three lollipops, but I'm just gonna show you how to make one and you can make as many as you like. But I've brought in some of this paper. This is from the Tone on Tone Seasonal Sidings Paper Pack. And I'm going to work with both sides. So I love this red tone as well as the polka dot side. And for each lollipop, you need eight circles punched. Okay, so I can set that aside for now. Now again, because this layout just has so much color and so many patterns going on, I'm going to also just add a little bit of ink to the edges of each circle to create the lollipop. And I'm using candied apple distressed oxide to do this. This is purely optional. You don't have to do this step if you don't like, but I just like the little bit of um, extra element that this does give to the lollipop. But again, I'm just gonna take my little blending tool and I'm just going to rub some ink all the way around each of those edges of the eight circles. Okay, so with all of our edges inked up, we can set that aside. So now we need to assemble our lollipop. Now, the easiest way I have found is to use repositionable tape because you probably will find that you'll be altering the shape um, a few times. Once you get the hang of putting them together, you will find it quite easy. But I'm just going to add a little bit of repositionable tape and I'm probably going to be covering 
probably about half. I'm putting it in behind that first circle and I'm covering probably half of that circle. So again, just a little bit of repositional tape and we just want to position it so that we start to form a circular shape. So just keep alternating the different papers. And it doesn't need to be perfect, just as long as you've got, you know, a rough circular shape there. My final two pieces. Okay, now with our final circle, it can be a little bit tricky, but basically you want one half the circle to go in behind this piece and the other half of the circle to sit over the top of this piece. So I'm going to adhere it in behind first and then just and then just flick it over like so. And you'll find when you do so, you can actually rotate the shape just a little bit to suit. And if you've got any um, of your repositionable tape showing, if there's some, you know, on your little lollipop, you can indeed um, just wipe that away with your fingers. But just to show you again, well, oh, come undone there. So I've stuck that last circle behind this guy. But I'm going to flick it up onto that first circle there. And then you can just adhere that in place. If it needs a little bit of repositionable tape in some areas, you can, of course, add some more. And then to finish, I'm just going to bring in the little adhesive rhinestones and pearls that were in the embellishment pack in the die cut pack and I'm just going to place one in the center so that we're left with a really fun candy swirl for Christmas. I'm just going to bring back in my base page. The completed layout features three lollipops so I'm going to attach two to the first page here on the left and then I'm going to have my photos and some journaling as well. So what I'll do is I'll bring my photos in for this page. And I have indeed two. I've got a six by four photo as well as a four by four photo for this page. And then I've got my lollipops here in the bottom corner and I'm going to add some journaling here as well. Now, when I'm happy with how everything's looking there, we can finish off our lollipops. So I'll just get my photos out of the side there. Okay, so I've adhered my first lollipop head in with some repositional tape. And then I'm going to add my second using some foam squares just to help build that bit of dimension on my page. So I've just got one slightly higher and the idea is to have them sort of on an angle. And from the same paper, I've trimmed a half inch strip, which we can add to the base of each lollipop. Don't worry about the overhang because that can be trimmed away. So we've got one there. And we'll add the second one tucked in under the second lollipop here. And then just with your scissors, we can trim those off cuts like so. So there are two lollipops in place. So now I just want to bring in my bow maker and create a little bow to add to one of those lollipops. So I'll just bring in my 12 inch trimmer again and I'm going to have, I've just got some paper off cuts here to create my bow, but basically I want the tails of my bow to be different uh, to the body of the bow. And the good thing with this tool is it does tell you the exact measurements um, for your bow. I want to make an extra small bow. So it tells me my paper width needs to be one inch wide. And then there's three paper lengths, paper A length, 
tells me it needs to be six inches long and I know that this is the body of the bow and then I need a piece three and a half inches long and I know that will be the tails and then a quarter of an inch will be for the center of the bow so I know that B and C need to be the different paper to create the different effect that I'm after so for paper A which is the body of the bow I'll bring in this lovely green and trim my one inch strip and I know that it needs to be six inches long that's the measurements on my tool so that will be for the body of my bow that's what I refer to that part of my bow and then I've trimmed another one inch wide strip and this will be uh, for the tails and that needs to be three and a half inches long And then I just need a quarter of an inch piece for the center of the bow. Okay. So I'll bring in our little bow maker and we've got our three pieces here. The first thing I need to do, I'm going to take paper A. And I'm not going to fold it really sharply, but I just want to crease through the center. And then using the notch punch on my bow maker, and you can see there's a little line here that you can um, align your paper to. I'm just going to pop one corner aligned to that line into the punch, and I'm going to punch. And you can see it takes the corner off. I'm just gonna flip it over and place the second corner aligned with that marking. And punch so you can see that we've got these two little um, points if you like I'm going to open back out my bow and just where that fold line is I'm going to align that to the marking on the notch punch and punch flip it over and do the same on the other side and that's what you will be left with now as for piece B that I have here these will be our tails again I'm going to fold that in half and where you have your little open ends here I'm just going to eyeball it but I'm going to align that pretty well centered into the notch punch and I'm going to punch and what that does is gives us our little fish tail now because I want my bow to have its tails facing down rather than behind the bow, I'm just going to cut mine in half and you'll see what I mean in a moment. But I'll bring all pieces back together and it's just a matter of running a little bit of tape through the centre and then just bringing those points into the middle and because we've punched them all nice and neatly, that will form the body of your bow. Now with your tails, I've just trimmed mine in half. You can have them going behind the bow like so, but I actually want my tails to be facing down on my lollipop like this. So that's why I've cut my little piece in half. So now to assemble the bow, I'm just going to add a little bit of tape to that small center piece and that will wrap through the center of your paper bow and just a little bit of tape on these ends and I can add my bow over the top of those and that's made a little bow for the lollipop so I'll bring back in my page and I just want that to sit at the base of that first lollipop. And I'm just going to add one of the adhesive pearls to the center, like so. All right. So I can bring in my red cardstock to cut some photo mats for my photos. 
And because I've got a six by four photo, that means I'll trim my photo mat to be 6.25 by 4.25. And then for my 4x4 four four photo, I can trim the photo mat to be 4.25 by 4.25. And I find those measurements will just give a really nice border edge to my photo, like so. And I can bring back in my layout now and we can add these to the page. Now I want this photo to the right and I can add the second photo here just tucked in behind the lollipops just that little bit. I like to type and print my journaling out and then I've just cut it into strips and I'm going to add that below my photo. I do this because I don't like my handwriting. It's not the greatest. Um, you could still add little paper strips like this though and just handwrite on it if you prefer. But I've just printed this out in a Word document first before adding it to my page. And it just tells the funny little story that supports my photos for my layout about waiting patiently near the Christmas tree when you know which is your present and you have to wait to open it. So that adds in my journaling. So now we can just finish off with a few simple little embellishments. I'm going to bring in the sticker sheet. And when I bring my two pages together, you can see I've got this cute little cluster of the trees here on that other page. And I'm going to add the larger of the trees to this side. So they all sit together. And I'll just add the star to the top with some foam squares. Like so. so I've got the three little trees together and some more bling because you can never have enough bling. A little bit of sparkle. And then I'm just going to add a simple little subphrase title to the side up here to my photo to complete my visual triangle of my embellishments for balance. And it just says fa la la. Now that pretty well completes my two page design. I really hope that you have a go at creating these pages for yourselves as well. Lots of fun creating the Christmas lollipops and perhaps you'd like to try highlighting your paper edges like I've done as well. Now with the placement of these photos on the layout, I do think you could add more photos to these two pages. If you wanted to use some of the peekaboo pockets that lift up, you could add some extra photos if you wish. Thank you so much for being here with me today. I appreciate each and every one of you. Don't forget, if you're in Australia and you're interested in any of the Creative Memories products or tools you've seen me working with today, you can send me an email or click on any of the product links below that will take you to my Creative Memories website. And likewise, if you're in the US, you can follow any of Lauren's links as well. But for now, thanks so much for being here and I will see you next time. Take care. Bye.